welcome back. Hi, Wales's boss. top adventurers, back from the adventures of Everest. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. But first, I want to know is why did you get on the plane with your boots on? <laughs> oh, we had a nightmare in China, we did, trying to get on the plane. Also, we took loads of uh, midstream tyres with us. Because um, obviously, did a tyre change before going to Everest. And we had loads of gear with us, so uh, we really stripped on weight. Um, they will lay you on with it, but they charge you like bloody hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So, um, so this is before you left this country, is it? Or so that was leaving <coughs> Tibet going to China. Yeah. yeah. So no, sorry, leaving Nepal going to China. So in the Nepal um, Airways, we basically um, put all as much gear on as we could. We you know, filled our pockets, and then I wore my boots, and uh, as you saw in the picture, the laptop was well, that way the time. <laughs> we were four hundred dollars overweight. Was so you? yeah, so we started off by putting everything on, then we were still two hundred dollars overweight. Wow. So um, then we just bribed them in the end. <laughs> but it took a long time, and then I'd, I'd taken some pen knives through with me as well. So pretty much, he got arrested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that so was before we got to China. We so didn't so make it. I saw Tamsi <laughs> coming back from a radar job, basically being uh, all up and taken out of her pocket, and it was a labour man. <laughs> And some of a French flick knife sort of thing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you've just had <laughs> a bad start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so obviously you, you landed and uh, then sort of the, the adventure begins right away or is it uh, chill out and take your time first? And we had to acclimatise to yeah. the height in Lhasa for right. a couple of days. Um, that was really interesting. There was loads of um, Chinese army around. We seemed to just march around the whole city all the time. Um, that was a bit weird. Um, yeah, so we stayed there for two days. Yeah, well, the one day we was on a rooftop um, having some food, and um, it was I and all these other rooftops, and the Chinese army are actually filming everyone, all the locals, and uh, so we were filming them and taking photos, and we only were told later it was real serious, you know, we could have bloody got locked up. Well, we would have a camera taken off us, right. and uh, it was a serious offence. You know, Just for filming it? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, I'd just take photos of them or anything. <coughs> oh, right. Yeah. Right. It's pretty strict, yeah. though. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think one of the army guys, the Chinese army, was the right perv, because it was a rooftop toilet, and he was on his other rooftop, and we were open window, and I think he was watching, I'd gone in for a pee, and uh, he was watching every <laughs> window. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh dear, yeah. that's not good then. So he gave me a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> the big teleporter <laughs> land. <laughs> oh brilliant. So, oh, so that's a bit of an experience then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the wrong experience. Yeah, exactly, oh, so it's, it's so uh, what's this yak curry all about? Well, as uh, one of the nice dishes you could have in uh, Tibet and uh, yeah it's quite good it's like beef really isn't it yeah old uh, beef yeah I've seen it on your your plan your tin yeah I've seen it on your plan Craig couldn't wait to get for yuck <laughs> yeah, yeah and chicken's feet that's chicken's feet <laughs> chicken feet sound yes that's, that's it, it. Yeah. <laughs> just for your need yeah <laughs> excellent so obviously you've landed you've, you know you've climatized um, yeah. and then so what about social your, your bikes and and, yeah. and then planning the route then, is it as such, or is it already a, a route planned? Or We'd already planned a route, you have to have already have a guide. So we flew into Tibet, our guide met us, then a couple of days later we took us to pick the bikes up, which we were told were Honda XLs, which we were alright about, but we were hoping they had something better. Right. But um, when we got to the shop, they didn't have Honda at all, it was just Chinese copies. And yeah. They were rubbish, weren't they? It was Chinese version of uh, Austrian KTMs. Ah, but, right. Uh, <laughs> but not. <laughs> luckily, after uh, we had the Chinese lady mechanic to do a couple of bits on it, the, the engines were superb, to be honest. How, how crap the rest of the bike was. Um, engines were good, and carburetion was, well, I don't think it could be better, do we? No. So, so they've done the job. <laughs> they, yeah, they ran it out actually really well. Right. Probably better than our Dakar bikes did in South America, so yeah. Yeah. that was quite surprising. We were worried, and the first mountain we went <coughs> over, you know, it was nearly five thousand meters. Obviously, with the guide, you with the guide, you got he's got to be with you sort of twenty four hours a day. You're not allowed anywhere by yourself, apparently. No, is this true? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was in the truck with the driver in the support truck, and uh, we had a little plan that whenever we saw a nice trail, we'd. Um, Tell them we were going to stop and take a photo, and they had to carry on and we catch them up. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so we yeah. see the truck <laughs> going off into the distance. And then Second prize, yeah. Like some mornings, 8.30, we tell him about, we want to take some of these photos and uh, <laughs> he didn't see us for a long time, did he? No. <laughs> All right, so you have to sort of sneak off to do a few trails. Yeah, like, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always fun because we never knew where they were going. No, I mean, there's a bit of law break in there, so it's good, it's good fun. Yeah. So. so from the base camp then, uh, for your little uh, the record then, yeah. um, was that something you, you, you've done alone? or? Well, w from the base camp we went alone. Our yeah. guy didn't want to go with us. Right. Um, well, he, he, did, he, didn't have a bike, <laughs> he didn't have a bike anyway. No. So um, we chatted with a few of the Sherpas the night before and they told us, that, well basically there's a footpath that you can follow. So, um, and it was completely deserted base camp, because we were so late in the year, yeah. um, there was nobody there. Normally there's tents where climbers um, acclimatise for, I think they stay there for a week. Yeah, and the Chinese there. army is usually there. So uh, in charge of it, but yeah, it was um, and we uh, we got there the day before we go up there, and it was dead, dead calm, and within ten minutes this bloody gale had blown up, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was just like granite blowing everywhere. So that held you back, I should imagine, quite quite considerably. Not really. No, I mean, we, we, no. we we did it slowly anyway, because right. you know, Craig had allergy sickness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Illness, yeah, 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 Right. And we just didn't want anything to go wrong, so we just took it really, really steadily. So you're still riding with obviously Yeah, so it's yeah. horrible. Yeah, it's real. It's, I've I don't think I've ever had a headache but after a bit of <coughs> piss up in it. Yeah. So, uh, but no, it felt like my head was going to explode. And when we got back one day, I didn't even take my helmet off. I it was in, I felt so painful to try and pull my helmet off. I left it on for a couple of hours. But uh, yeah, it's just a sickness. It'll let, my legs were again, head actually throbbing, and just felt like uh, I felt like you're gonna die. That's a, that's a feeling, all the, all the So there's a bit of a worry about Craig, you know. Yeah, yeah imagine, yeah, yeah, obviously. And you're so worried you didn't worry at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about the door? Carry on. <laughs> I was alright. It was just extremely cold. Yeah. Um, I think when we left, it was minus ten. Wow. When we left from the actual. A place. We stayed in Longbuck Monastery, which is a probably about 10 k's from the base camp. So we left there, it's minus 10. I think within 10 minutes, my well, I, I was nearly in tears because my hands were so cold. Right, actually, so, you, you had to take the gear on as well. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, it was yeah. only the hands really. We had uh, those heat um, packs to keep to keep your hands warm, but the fingers were just yeah, yeah. hideous. Yeah, was it, uh, was it just normal motorcycle riding gear, was it, that you had on, or...? Uh, we had thermals, we had yeah, uh, yeah. Revit gear, um, yeah. and those well. heat packs we just stuffed, stuffed in everywhere, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Boots, <laughs> trousers, Yeah, force field uh, body armour, which, you know, took a bit of a way to chill out, which is good as well, so, but yeah. So the, the gear worked well, but the body didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's surprising. Yeah, I think just walking is not too bad, as you just plod in walking, but... Just going up here on the bike to get there is freezing the wind chill, you know. Yeah. But uh, so we had to keep stopping and warming hands up, and then yeah, it's horrible. But once we actually got got higher, it was really hard to breathe. If you sort of did anything that you you sort of used loads of energy, you would just there gasping for breath. Yeah, obviously with the altitude and whatever. Yeah, and yeah. that was pretty scary. Actually, the terrain you're riding on, I suppose, it, was it ice or snow? There or? was a little bit of ice, you yeah. know, we didn't get up to the snow line, um, but a little bit of ice, rocky, um, quite gravelly in places. Hard enough then? Yeah, it was hard enough. Okay. Some bits were really hard. Yeah. Some bits we had to help each other over rocks and stuff like and that. And did you achieve what you set out to achieve? Um, well, we set out to get to advanced base camp, yep. but we got to 5359 meters, which is a ladies record up Everest. Oh, excellent, well done. So, uh, yeah, me and Craig and Adam, ladies, <laughs> up Everest. Yeah, we was just the two of us, you know, we've heard of other records, as yeah. like a Japanese guy now. What, he had 60 people with him, he's like a big expedition and he's on some special bike. Yeah. And the other record is basically, there's a lot of guys with him as well, so yeah, cool. just us two or three. So. You two had two Chinese bikes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was an amazing experience. Um, you know, yeah, I think we probably would give it another crack, wouldn't we? 
a yeah. different time of year. Probably. They'd have to plan it probably and have the right gear and, lo- and people around there. It's impossible to get any idea. I think there's mm. a lot that you would help. Yeah, without the full sport, yeah. Which, <coughs> which really yeah. we wish the records were initially that, but people have done it on their own or just in pairs because it'd be nice to see how far we actually would have got. You know, because, uh, but one experience is not many people out there would. Well, you didn't think about it, tender, low ride it. No. Yeah. So, you know, hats off. And Tibet is amazing as well. You know, we spent yeah. nine days trail riding <laughs> through there. Um, none of the hotels had heating at all. None of them had hot water. Some of them didn't even have water. So you just, we were just freezing for the entire time. Right, so it's like piss And all they, had, all they had to eat was yak curry or noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Good old yak curry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, like look in the kitchen and one day it's like a big lump of meat and like they looked about about two year old. But well, that's where they just chop it up and fry it and that's why you're eating it. Yeah. But uh luckily we didn't none of us had poisoning, food poisoning do we? No. So it was quite uh, quite lucky. So it's a bit of an adventure outside the adventure then. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Craig, Tamsin, thank you for allowing me in your home and uh, doing this little interview. Uh, sorry to drag you away from your, I know you've got a you know, heavy training schedule uh, with all the adventures and the trips you've got planned coming up. Uh, talking of which, uh, what's next for Black Desert Training? Um, next for the actual school is we're, we're running a rally training and navigation weekend in April. So people on, on big bikes who want to learn big bike techniques and to use an ICO rainbow for GPS. And we're also off to Cambodia in January. All right, right. On a two-week extreme uh, jungle ride. So uh, yeah, watch this space. Watch this space. Uh, any other big trips coming up? Uh, Are you some Bahamas or something? Is it? No. Yeah, well, it might be one in the Bahamas. <laughs> um, and where's the other one? Papua New Guinea. Ah, uh, Papua New Guinea. Yeah, yeah, yeah where's that? Is that's that's on the cards for next year. So again, watch this space. Um, obviously plans for the Dakar 2013? Yeah, so we're going to have a full year uh, in 2012 training, hopefully doing a couple of World Championship rallies, um, hopefully go to Sardinia, Dubai, uh, see what else happens and get ready for 2013. Excellent. I hope you have a good, good race. So does anybody like to thank? Obviously there's a few people out there, I should imagine. Yeah, there's a couple of sponsors. There's Revit Clothing, Force Field Body Armour, Laser Helmets, Mitchin Tyres and Krieger and Dell. Well, I'm glad you're back safe and sound and uh, look forward to your next epic adventure. Thank, thank you very much. You.